Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, a now playing sign for your vinyl record collection. Well, in this age of digital music, one would think that the vinyl record has disappeared, and that is not true. There is an entire society out there that just loves vinyl records. They love their turntables. They love the sound the stylist gives through their stereo system when it runs in the grooves of a vinyl record. And a friend of mine contacted me and said, I saw these signs and I wondered how you thought I could make one. So him and I spoke a little bit and I thought, what a great idea for the show. I know that some of you out there just love your vinyl records. So what I'm going to do on this week's show is I'm going to show you how to make one of these really cool signs. And it all starts off with a little bit of walnut. So what I have here is some 3 8 thick walnut. I have cut it to a width of two and a half inches and the eventual length is going to be 13. This is going to be our front piece. Our lens, if you will, will where the now playing will be lit up. So what I've done is I've gone on the computer and I have printed up just some simple block letters of now playing. The height of these letters ended up to be one and five eighths of an inch. Now, I need to cut all of these out over the scroll saw. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna spray the back of these patterns with spray adhesive, let it dry up for three minutes to let it get tacky, and then I'm going to rub it down so that these letters are centered on our two and a half inches. When you're cutting these, you just want to be careful. For things like the O, you need to leave a line here so that this center section of the O remains intact. As well, here on the P, you will do the same thing, and on the A. Um, I'm going to get these cut. There's a lot to cover today. I don't think we need a video of me scrolling these out, but I will cut these letters out, and then I will show you what we've got at that point in time. And when you're finished your scrolling, this is what you end up with. And hopefully here you can see where I've left just little nubs on the O, the P, and the A just to keep their center sections intact. Now, normally I would peel off the pattern, but this time we're going to leave it on. We're going to leave it on for the next step. But before we can do that, we're gonna flip this over and with a quarter sheet sander, we're going to very carefully sand the back to make it smooth and to clean up any burrs that may be on the back of our cutting. So at this point now, you can put this aside and we will now make the main box that will hold this in place. And for that, we're going to need some half inch thick walnut. Well, the depth of our cabinet to hold this is going to be three inches. Uh, I think that should be sufficient. So what I need to do is take these half inch thick pieces of walnut over to the table saw and we're going to rip some pieces that are three inches wide. Well, before we can do any mitering now that we have our pieces cut to their width, we need to cut a dado in the front and on the inside edge one quarter of an inch back from the front edge of each piece. That is going to house our now playing face. So what I have is I have a dado blade set in here. I have it set for three eighths of an inch. Um, I have it set one quarter of an inch from the fence and all I'm going to do is run all of these pieces through on the inside edge uh, to cut that dado. Now while you have the dado blade set up, we also need to cut a rabbit in the back edge here. That will be for the backer board to close in the whole thing once we get the lights inside and that sort of thing. So set up your saw. We want roughly a 5 16 of an inch wide and 5 16 of an inch deep rabbit right on the very back edge of the inside edge of each one of these boards. So what you end up with is your stock looking just like this with your dado here in the front edge and your rabbit in the back. 
what we need to do now is take this over to the table saw and we're going to miter our corners in order to house our now playing sign. And what you end up with after a dry fit is this. Um, and if we flip it over, I just gotta be careful here because it's there's nothing holding it. You can see the rabbit on the back that is going to house our back plate. I want to add a special little touch, and that will involve our two side pieces. And let me show you what I have in mind. So what I have in mind for the sides of our uh, sign or vinyl holder is if you guys are a vinyl enthusiast or if you're old enough to ever have used or listened to vinyl, you will know exactly what this is. And what this is, for those of you who don't know, the 45 records used to have this insert that you could pop into it to allow it to play on your turntable. So what I want to do is I have two of these uh, printed out and I want to place them right here in the center of our sides so that when this thing is illuminated, not only will you have now playing lit up in the front end, but on the sides of this thing, you will also have that 45 insert lit up. I just think that will be very, very cool little touch. So I'm just going to cut it out of our sides. I'll get those cut. It is a time consuming process. And then I'll come back and I'll show you what they look like. And with those cut, these pieces are pretty much done. Just like we did with the now playing sign, we need to sand the back side of it to get rid of any of that burring that happens when you cut these out. And just like we did with the now playing sign, we are going to leave the masking tape and the patterns on. And that is gonna bring us to our next step. What I want to do is take a clear sheet of plexiglass, I'll peel the paper off of it as I go here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to coat this with Vaseline. Why Vaseline? Because we are going to clamp this onto here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up some clear resin. I don't want to dye it. I don't want anything like that. I just want to mix up resin. And I'm going to fill these cavities. I don't want to fill them all the way, but just before the top. And I'm going to do that to both the 245 inserts and the now playing sign. The purpose of the masking tape and the pattern being left on there is in case I drip. I'm using the Vaseline, a thin coat of it, as a mold release. Now, if you have regular mold release, you can just use it. I don't have any. So I'm going to get this resin poured. We're going to let it dry for 24 hours minimum and then we're gonna move on with this project. I think you guys are gonna like what I have coming up next. Now at this point, I have some ridges here. That's just where the plywood, uh, or sorry, the plexi ended up being in the way or overlapping and it seeped through. So if you have that, it's nothing that a sharp chisel can't take of, you take care of. You can just trim this down and get rid of those ridges. Now the other thing that you want to do if you have excess resin, you need to remember that this has to fit into our dado. So at some point in time, if it doesn't fit and this excess resin is here, that could be your culprit. So you may need to trim that. I'm gonna do that after I finish the next step because I wanna show you how this uh, diffuses the light. So I'm just gonna use a flashlight and shine it in here and you can see it doesn't really diffuse the light at all and that's my issue here so what i want to do for starters is i have a random orbital sander with 220 grit sandpaper in it the very first thing i'm going to do is sand the face of all of these pieces 
And after sanding, although this is dusty, there is still no diffusion of the light. And that's because we let this resin pour recess to the surface. So we're not sanding it. The resin is still clear. And we're going to change that now by flipping it over and sanding the back with the 220 grit to give this a frosted look. So let me just give this a wipe and I'll show you the difference, what we're looking at between the letters on the left, which are still undiffused, and these ones. I don't know if the camera picks it up, but this is a much softer light. This is much more harsh, especially if I clean the dust out of it. So I'm going to sand the entire back of all of these pieces, making sure that I give this a nice, even frosted look all the way across. Okay, truth be told, I bumped up the sandpaper. I didn't like the amount of frosting that I was getting here on these letters, but I bumped it up to 80 grit, and I've got a really nice frosted backing of these letters now it gives a really soft kind of a glow but yet because the resin is unsanded in the front it's nice and shiny in the front and it really looks great so what i'm going to do now is apply glue to all the miters and i will clamp this together and put it aside and allow it to dry from there we can move on to the next step which is we need to make a base for this well, for the base, it is nothing more than some off cuts of the original stock that we cut the frame for. And I have ripped it to a width of 5 8 That will make the stand for this 5 8 of an inch tall. I've just mitered the corners so that we will have a raised platform. The reason for this platform is that it needs to house the electronics for the LEDs here. One will be the on-off uh, and the brightness control in case the batteries for the remote don't work. And the other will be for the power cord and for our remote sensor. So what I need to do is measure the diameter of these and drill holes in the front and back pieces that are going to house those two units. And as well, um, after we get that done and we test fit these pieces, we can glue this little frame together. Now if you're wondering what kind of LEDs I'm using, I'm using these. Uh, these are GoV uh, RGB LED strip lights and you can get these on Amazon. I'll post a link to these but um, really these are excellent little lights. I use them in a lot of my projects. You've probably seen me use them here before. They're, they're just wonderful. I'll post a link to, to these in case you guys want to try to get some. So either way, let's get these holes drilled and get our base glued up. Well, I think it's about time that our main sign and our base meet. So what I've done is I've drilled some quarter inch diameter holes here and in our base here, and they will line up and help me align things and strengthen it. And I can glue this in place. Um, I have also, just a second, there we go. <laughs> I have also drilled a half inch diameter hole right in the corner in the inside of the base here. That will be for the wiring to come down into our base um, to feed our LED strips that will be on the inside. So we can get this glued in place and clean up all the squeeze out and set it aside to dry. Well, now that our glue is dried on our entire sign, I'm going to add the backboard. And all this is is a 3 16th of an inch thick piece of walnut. I have drilled and countersunk for some number five screws. And I'm going to screw the backer board onto the back using some number five brass screws. Um, I want the backer board screwed on just on the off chance that for some reason at some point in time you need to access the interior of this to maintain or uh, to fix or whatever or should there be a malfunction in the LEDs well you know what you don't have a glued sealed box you have access to get at it all right so there we go with our backer plate now installed 
These are brass screws, guys, by the way. Don't crank on them. You'll snap the heads off them. But now that we have that installed, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That is spectacular. But we have no way to mount our album on the top. So that is the next thing that we need to concentrate on is how are we going to mount the album to allow it to sit here? Well, I needed some kind of bracket that would hold the jacket of the album while you're using it in the sign. And all I did was I just drew up a simple little angled bracket. It is nothing spectacular. If you guys would like, I'll scan this. And if you want that little pattern, of course, I'll just send you the scan of this original template and you can make your own without any issues. But I've cut two of them out of half inch thick walnut and what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue them and equally space them here on my sign so that when the album sits here, it doesn't obscure too much of the album cover. We're just going to glue them in place. It's as simple as that. Um, they don't hold a lot of weight, so I'm not even going to be using dowels to reinforce them. Just a little bit of wood glue, glue them in place, make sure they're square to your sign and let them dry up. Well, really, there's not much more that I can do to this until I get the finish on it. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to apply the finish. And when we get that finished, <laughs> we can add the electronics, the LEDs, etc., uh, etc., et to finish this project off. So I'll see you when the finish is done and when it's dry. Well, I have applied several coats of satin finish water-based varnish, and this thing looks absolutely beautiful. I just love it. Um, I'm now going to install the LEDs. Now, they are peel and stick LEDs. Um, I do have a tutorial on the channel for soldering, if you don't know how to solder them together. So I'll post a link to that below. But one detail, if you're going to make something like this, these cords are whites, which means that there are white rings exposed um, when <laughs> these things are protruding out your holes here. So I have taken some flat black paint and painted the ends of them black so that they will not show so much um, and stick out like such a sore thumb. So. I'm going to get all the wiring done here and get some uh, five minute epoxy and glue in our connectors. And when I get all that done, I'm going to show you what this project ended up like. So while you're playing an album, you take your jacket. Once you're done all your wiring, everything's said and done. You put your album jacket there in the stand and using your remote, you can just turn it on. Check that out. That is absolutely spectacular. And of course, with the remote, you can flip through your different arrays of colors uh, to, to get, you know, custom, whatever you like. It's up to you. You can take whatever color. These are absolutely spectacular. Um, I mean, even if you want, you can even put it on like a flash as if it was uh, playing like, you know, and you're, you're warning people now playing, now playing. So it's just a cool little feature. Either way, uh, guys, this thing is awesome. And there you have it. I'm now playing a record stand. Guys, this project was a load of fun between the table saw work, the scroll saw work, the resin, the soldering, which I don't get to do very often, but I do enjoy it. Um, all of it together, all combined, was just a spectacular project from start to finish. Uh, and I really enjoyed the entire process. Now, that sanding of the resin to basically frost the inside so that it, um, it diffuses the LEDs a little better. If you don't do that, you will be able to see through to the inside and see your LEDs. So that may be something that you want to consider. Uh, barring that, if you didn't want to do that, you could put some white plexi on the inside as a diffuser so that you cannot see the individual LEDs. 
Either way, I think it turned out fantastic. I really like the side accent on this with those little 45 inserts. I think that was a nice little touch that I kind of threw in there. And I don't know, the entire project is just amazing. It's just wonderful. I really, really like the way it turned out. Now, truth be told, that front sensor for the remote and the rear plug, I did not use any epoxy on those to fit them in place. The, the uh, holes that I drilled were so tight that it was a struggle to get them in. And I honestly didn't think that epoxy was going to do anything any better than what this did because I don't think I would be able to get any in there. I think that the actual connector would squeeze it all out before it had a chance to do any good. But I will see how this is over a length of time and if those holes should loosen up or things should go a little funky on that, it's no trouble to pop them out and add a little bit of epoxy and glue them in place. Heck, even a little run of silicone around the inside edge just to seal it to the wood on the inside, that would work as well. Either way, guys, this is a wonderful project. If you are uh, a vinyl enthusiast, this project here would be right up your alley. And I honestly hope you're going to give this one a try because this is awesome. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. We have a lot of fun here every Tuesday and Friday. And, you know, hopefully you'll consider becoming a part of that. Guys, this project may not be for everyone, but there are those of you out there that I'm sure would enjoy to, uh, to have this project. So don't forget, if you want the pattern for the brackets of the jacket covers, uh, to hold the jacket cover rather, all you gotta do is send me an email at a cutabove underscore woodworking at hotmail.com and I'd be more than happy to send it to you. Heck, I'll even send you the exact lettering set um, that I used for this if you want that. And I may even send in that 45 insert as well. Why, why not? I'll make it a whole pattern so that you guys can take all those templates and then just build your box around it. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. I hope you've enjoyed this project as much of, as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. I hope that you're going to try it for yourself. And honestly, guys, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.